are your week two waiver wire ads. Top five, baby. All right, let's get it, goons. My number one waiver wire pick for this week, Kenneth Gainwell. Kenny G, baby. He had 14 out of the 16 total carries at an NERB in the game. One carry for Boston Scott, three yards. One carry for DeAndre Swift, three yards. He finished with 14 carries for 54 yards. That's an average of 3.8 yard, yards per carry. Four of four receptions for 20 yards. Now that's important because you want a back that can be receiving the ball and be playing that workhorse role. He did play 62% of the snaps. He did only have 9.4 half PPR points, but I do see a big workload coming through for Kenny G with one of the league's best rushing offenses. All right, number two with two touchdowns last week and just eight carries. I've got Justice Hill. Now, don't burn all your fab on him. It's a nice little gamble. Someone who's getting two goal line looks in game one is definitely worth a waiver wire pick. And I'm going Justice Hill with D- uh, with J.K. Dobbins out. Got Puka Nakua. I would say use all your fab. Actually, just joking. Use most of your fab, I would say, on this guy right here. He had 15 targets, 10 catches, 119 yards. Those are Cooper Cup numbers right there. He's going to be out until week four. So, I mean, this is a nice little short-term uh, stash, and you can put him in your flex for the next couple of weeks. You could probably even play this guy even after Cooper, Com- uh, Cooper Cup comes back. So, I think he's going to carve out a nice role. He's also the fifth highest rookie. He had the fifth highest rookie target share since 2000 with 40% target share. So, those are some big-ass numbers right there. I like Puka Nakua for sure. Number four, I got Jake Ferguson. Now, we all know in fantasy season, tight ends suck unless you got like one of the top five guys. And even then, it's not guaranteed. So you want a guy that's going to get a lot of target share. He's going to get a lot of snap percentage and someone that's in a high powered offense. Someone like Jake Ferguson. Now, last year, Dalton Schultz was a top 10 tight end. Um, He had a lot of open targets and stuff like that. So Jake Ferguson had two receptions on seven targets for only 11 yards. Now you're like, man, 11 yards? That's nothing, but you got to think about it. His seven targets were number one on the whole team. He had three more targets than the next Dallas receiver, and that was C.D. Lamb. So if you're looking for a tight end that maybe may be able to help you out and possibly could be a long-term flex, look at your boy, Jake Ferguson. I've got another one here. I would say uh, Kyron Williams. He led the Rams backfield in snaps, routes run, touches, and fantasy points. Uh, I think he might take over this backfield, to be honest. I don't know. Cam Akers was not looking good yesterday. I think he averaged just around two yards per carry. He had about 20 carries, 20-plus carries. And uh, Kyron Williams looked a lot better than Cam Akers there. So, I don't know. This might be a little shift in the backfield. So, if Kyron Williams is sitting out there on your waiver wire, I'd say go and uh, scoop him up for sure. Jeez. I like that one. All right. So, we got Kenneth Gainwell, Puka Nakua. Jake Ferguson, Kyron Williams, and Justice Hill. Is that is that what we got here? All right, I like that. Any honorable mentions that you guys want to drop? Yeah. Zach Wilson? No, nah, that's that's too soon, man. Too soon. This guy, nah. that's a complete joke. Do, do not, even if you get paid fab to do it, do not grab Zach Wilson. I think he's the negative uh, fantasy points at halftime right now. Yeah, yeah we, we hope uh, Aaron Rodgers is all right. Honestly, it doesn't look good. I'm seeing reports call it a torn Achilles. Not confirmed yet. Prayers up for him, man. Legend in the game. I don't want Zach Nelson near my fantasy team <laughs> or near my mom or any of her friends, man. We are not doing that whole Zach Wilson thing. No milk hunters out here, man. On a roll mention, though, Roshan Johnson. He looked like oh. a violent runner. He was uh, he was there for a lot of the pass catching work. Now, although he didn't carry the ball as much as Khalil Herbert, he did get a lot of usage in there. And it looks like it is going to be a split backfield going forward. So if Roshan Johnson already isn't scooped up, pick him up because he might be a league winner by the time it's all said and done. Yeah, I'm also seeing Rashid Shahid is only rostered in 13% of leagues. Like if, if he's available, like I, I think he's definitely worth a waiver wire scoop as well. Without a doubt. He uh, put up 89 yards and, and just, you know, what, five receptions, one touchdown. Um, yeah, man. And that's, and, and you know, that's 16 and a half fantasy points in a PPR league. And that's with him losing, you know, dropping the ball once. So that's a nice yeah, pick. I got one more name. He's a nice uh, handcuff to have and might have a little bit of standalone 
value for the rest of the year is Tajay Spears. He did lead the Titans' backfield with snaps, routes run, and targets in Week 1. So he did out-snap Derrick Henry. Not by a lot, but if any injury happens to Derrick Henry, you're walking away with an RB1 right there. So look out for Tajay Spears. That's the Week 2 waiver wire report, man. Let's get it. Game day, we out.